In this video, I'm going to show you five blues licks that you can use in your slide guitar playing. So here's the twist. These licks don't come from slide guitar players, these come from blues harmonica players. The taking inspiration from blues harmonica players is something that a lot of slide guitar players have done. Dwayne Allman being a notable example. Um, so I think you'll recognize some of these sounds and, you know, the harp stuff just fits really well under the slide. Today I'm in open G tuning, so D, G, D, G, B, D. Uh, I'm going to look at these licks. They, they were originally played in, you know, all sorts of different keys. I've transposed them all to the key of G so we can compare them and it'll just make it easier for you to get them under your fingers and then apply it to your own playing. Stick to the end and as a bonus, I'll give you some tips on how you can apply these licks, use them and make them part of your own playing. So this lick comes from Check Up On My Baby by Sonny Boy Williamson II. It's originally in the key of A and starts on the four chord and then it resolves to the one chord. So we're starting up here at the 15th fret and we're sliding from the 14th fret on string two up to the 15th. And then we add the first string 15th fret. It's just a little triplet thing. It comes in on beat two, so it goes one. Just three times, starting on beat two. So one, so two, three, four, one. Of course, you can adapt this and, and, and do all sorts of things to it. You can let those notes ring a bit more. You know, however you want to uh, change this and make it your own. Um, and then the last bit is just on beat one of the one chord. It's just going from the 13th fret to the 11th fret on string two. And then 12th fret, which is the G note, so resolving. So just 13th fret, slide down to 11, and then finish on the 12th fret. So one. Licks from Sugar Coated Love by Lazy Lester. Originals in the key of E. It's just over the one chord. So when we transpose it to G, it's just over the G chord. It starts just with a long note on the 12th fret. So you can put some vibrato on that. And then goes up to the 15th fret on the and of four. So it's going two, three, four. To the 15th fret. Two, three, four. And then we're going to go down to the 12th fret. So we go from the 12th fret down to the 11th fret on string one. Keep the slide where it is and play the second string. And then we slide up to the G to resolve. So there's, we're playing a triplet here. And then we're sliding into that note there. time to slide on the third string. So the whole thing. This lick's uh, from Little Walter from You're So Fine. It's in the key of E originally. Uh, we're starting on the four chord and then it's resolving to the one chord. So we're starting up at the 12th fret on the second string. I'm playing triplets, but it's a quarter note triplet, so. Two, three, four. 
three, four. And then we're going, we're staying on that fret and we're going on to the third string. So, third string, fourth string, back to the tenth fret. Just staying on that twelfth fret but ducking back to the tenth fret on the third string. So we've got three, four. So that's great on its own. Three, four. Then it has a second part, which sounds really reminiscent of Dwayne Holman, um, which is coming in on the and of three. So one, two, three. starting on the third string again it's basically that same idea essentially from the first bar uh, but with a triplet uh, so it just changes the second to last note as well so instead of we've got so the whole thing three four Great, great phrase. So this phrase is from Junior Wells. It's from Hoodoo Man Blues and originally in the key of A. So this is a turnaround lick over the last two bars of a blues. Um, it's all on the third string, apart from the last note. And we're going to just start on the third fret and go to the fifth fret on the 6th fret, so it's just blues scale. And we're going to descend, 5th fret, 3rd fret open, so it comes in on beat 2, so it's going 1, or you could slide, pull off if you want. you how you want to phrase it remember it's played on harmonica so you know what we do is just trying to emulate that in a guitaristic way or you can just change it and, and do your own thing with it but just get the inspiration so next bit's tricky there's a lot of stuff to cram in here we start on the third fret and then it's a bit of a blur from there but you're going from the sixth fret to the fifth to the third and then open and or resolving to that G on the fifth on the fourth string, fifth fret. So you're sliding down. Slow motion, third, sixth, fifth, third, pull off. Kind of happens really quickly. You might not get all the notes in there, but you know that that's the sound you're going for. So the whole lick goes one. That's all in slow motion. But that, that part. That's the bit to work on. It's a little bit hard to hear on the original exactly what he's doing. Um, and again, you, you know, you can just take inspiration from it and, and do your own thing with it regardless. Last phrase comes from a little Walter song last night. Uh, this is in the key of D. 
and this is just going 5 4 1 so it's the last four bars of a blues the fifth chord the fourth chord and resolving to the one so we start up at the 12th fret and then we're going to go down to 11th 10th 12th fret on the second string and then uh, we're staying on the 12th fret kind of need three fingers for this, second, first, and thumb. Just kind of descending down. Uh, so we're going. So. Just a little bit fiddly, um, and those rhythms are, you know, slightly different. You've got a triplet, and then you've got some semiquavers. So, um, you know, that just might take a little bit of work with the technique. Uh, the rest of that bar, we just add uh, an extra 12th fret at the end. So we go. It's adding that last 12th fret, which is leading into so the next bar. So 12th fret, 10th fret. So if I play all the way up to there, that kind of makes one part of it. So three, four, so then we're doing that um, descending thing again and we're finishing off with on that last note so you could go so after and just that last note ends up on beat one of the, of the final chord of, of the one chord so I'll put all that together slowly. It's quite a lot to, to piece together. Um, so. Put some vibrato on that last note, so. little fragment you know you can kind of explore little things with that so what do you do with all this that's the big question um, there are so many sources for licks, ideas, you know, you can get them from books, from videos, from um, recordings, you know, from friends, it doesn't matter what instrument it comes from, I mean, this, this video is a good example of that, you know, these are harmonica playing licks, um, but at the end of the day, they're music, I mean, that's the, the point, so you can get inspiration from anywhere, but then what do you do with it? So, the first thing to do is just get it under your fingers, so learn the lick, get it under the slide, be able to play it comfortably. Then ideally, take it into some different keys. So try it in different places on the neck. What I find is that really embeds that idea quite thoroughly if you move it around. So if you've learned it in the key of G, like all of these licks, maybe transpose it to the key of C. You know, try and play all those licks in that key. And then put on a backing track, put on a blues, um, and try and play along and, and allow yourself the freedom to mess around with them. That's very, very important. If you have a loop pedal, this can be great as well. You can just loop one chord and just mess around with that lick a little bit. Um, but if you don't, uh, you know, you can just play over a backing track on YouTube or, or wherever you can find one. And the idea is just to keep playing the idea almost to the point where you're so bored of playing the idea, you want to play something else. I think that's a really good way of doing this because you're only going to get better at playing that idea the more you do it. 
And then there just comes a point where you feel like, oh, okay, I, I, I'm fed up of doing it exactly like this. I'm going to just change a little bit. Things that you can do to change it, you could change the rhythm, you could change some of the notes. Uh, the thing that I found that's really helpful is just changing notes at the end, either adding on notes or taking away notes or, you know, just changing the notes. Um, it's a little bit easier to keep track of the lick if you do it that way around. Um, and then you can start exploring, well, what happens if I play this lick in a different place in the blues? You know, if this was a turnaround lick, what if I play it somewhere else? Um, do I have to change anything to make it work? So it's, it's, it's an exploration. And the thing is, the work you do on one lick will have a huge impact on all your playing. It just kind of gets you being creative with ideas. And then ultimately, you know, if you come up with your own idea, it's not someone else's lick, but it's your own idea, then, you know, this is going to stand you in good stead as well because it allows you to adapt that idea that you've come up with and do more with it. And at a certain point, you get to be able to do this in, on the spur of the moment, you know, in real time. Um, and that's where, you know, things get really interesting where, you know, you're just following a thread, you're um, walking along this path, you know, it's a bit of a tightrope most of the time, um, but it, it, it creates excitement because, you know, th the audience you know, is is on the tightrope with you and they don't know whether you're going to fall off and, and, and make a screw up, you know. So um, this is this is where you want to get to with this stuff, where you're really just able to take ideas and adapt them on the spur of the moment and do things with them. So have fun with this um, and, you know, just be as creative as you can. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, subscribe for more content like this.